So my dear friends, I'm back again here. I'm happy to be here. As you know, last week I was in Rome and I returned shortly. It was a very beautiful experience once again to be in the eternal city. Those of you to have been in Rome, you can't match that beautiful experience of joy, of holiness. At the same time the crowds, the tourists perhaps of all the races of all the colors of all types the people who come there let me start with the message of this week which the lord proclaims to us on sunday how basically jesus speaks about his discipleship one who wants to become a disciple should take up his cross and follow him and he explains it with uh, examples with a parable so says that just in case you are thinking of building a building or perhaps it's the example that is given of a tower you know when you build the tower brick by brick you go on top and you do not know how long or rather how tall the tower is going to be but then the strange thing is the tower in order to be built of such great height the person should have a plan the person should have the materials and he should have everything organized if that isn't there the money of course the most important part the workers also and if these things are not planned surely your tower will be a failure the other example that jesus gives in the gospels is about a king who may want to go for a war in old and days this war was very important between the nations and there were physical wars there were no such thing as atomic wars that they could drop a bomb and close the whole country or destroy the whole country there were soldiers foot soldiers the guns perhaps with uh, all uh, weapons that went for war and so the beautiful example that jesus says is how can a king who has got just a few soldiers let's say 5000 10000 fight against those another king who has got thousands and perhaps lakhs of soldiers so the best thing for this king who has got no soldiers is to make peace is to send his ambassadors perhaps his men of good will and to say that let us not fight you take what you want or perhaps we can decide in this way and so jesus says if this is the way of life how much more it should be the way for the kingdom so therefore if you would like to be a disciple plan properly and the most important thing is that you are not promised things and riches and varieties progress prosperity rather jesus tells you about the cross you know if you go for an interview the first thing that perhaps you ask the one who is interviewing you what is the type of work that i have to do how many hours i have to work and what is my salary that's very important because the word salary means that may define or decide your future for the work that you are deciding imagine the one who is interviewing said that you won't get anything you will have difficulty you will not be able to go home you may not be able to eat perhaps the salary also will not be given who will come for this work but that's the type of challenge that jesus throws to each one of us perhaps we can think of only like the soldiers who are patriotic i was i read somewhere that one of these kings told the his soldiers that i have nothing to give you i have nothing to share with you perhaps many of you will die many of you perhaps might come back lame or crippled are you ready and when the soldier said yes we are ready to die for the country perhaps that is what jesus also wants that the kingdom is focused among us and for the sake of the kingdom we are ready to sacrifice anything and everything of course jesus promises them that you will be rewarded 100 times in this world and the world to come also but for the time being you have to make a decision you know the first thing is also beautiful who knows god's plans for us who can decide for us 
perhaps we can make many many plans but if they don't realize who is the one who decides for us and the book of wisdom says that ultimately everything depends on god everything depends on god every day we get so many chances to do good and to avoid evil and as much as we invest in good perhaps that is also the result that we reap when we sow something we reap something when we are not sown anything how do you expect to reap at all or when we have sown something like not good seeds how can you expect a good crop so is his life you know the second reading is also very beautiful the book of philomen it's considered the shortest book in the bible it's only one chapter and is a beautiful perhaps advice that st paul gives to philomen because one particular slave that has run away from philomen philomen must have been a rich man who had lot of slaves and this slave by name onesimus has run away and naturally when he has run away he is always frightful he has seen for some job and st paul he meets and he converts himself and st paul is so fond of him that he says he wouldn't like to leave him but then he would ask him to go to his back to his master you can imagine the fear and the fright of this man onesimus to go back to his master perhaps he might kill him perhaps he might torture him but then the beautiful letter that st paul writes to onesimus he says he has come as a slave but now he is a christian and as a christian i send him as a friend he will continue to work for you but his attitude will not be like a master and a slave but as like two friends which means that your work is not important your salary is not important but your being together your being what you are your dignity acceptable to both the master and the servant that is more important a message for us also as we prepare for this kingdom as it were as we select or elect on our side the good effects of the kingdom and to prepare us to take up the cross to say that ultimately god is the most important person in our life my dear friends i now go to little of rome to you as you know it was a good experience i said to you i had gone to participate in the celebrations of the consistory of the three of the 20 cardinals newly appointed and two of them from india bishop archbishop philip neri from rome from goa and archbishop anthony pula from hyderabad it was a beautiful ceremony wherein each of these cardinals go to the pope kneel down and the pope gives them the cap a sign of authority and service also and a sign a ring also is placed on your finger and ring as you know whether it's in marriage whether it's in the bishopric or in any other sign it's a sign and symbol of fidelity faithfulness to the church faithfulness to the people it was a beautiful ceremony and afterwards of course there were other celebrations of each of these cardinals cardinal philip neri who was greeted and who was who celebrated especially eucharist so also bishop anthony archbishop anthony pula now cardinal also celebrated and on the last day on the 30th uh, um, cardinal oswald gracious released a book a biography about him called to serve a beautiful experience a beautiful witness as what he as a person as a human being as a man of family as a man who has known the world and the people as such and at the same time as a leader of the church who has been to the highest pinnacle of a of the office of the in the church as cardinal and the closest consultor of the holy father pope francis so these were the moments that i spent in rome and as you know more rome is always special especially to visit the st peter's basilica the the decorum the aura the silence the music 
the beautiful icons, the beautiful pictures and paintings. It's a heavenly experience. And Rome is always a welcoming city. And perhaps I hope that you also will get a chance one day to visit this eternal city. As regards the cardinals, as you know, a little question has been asked to me, what are the different categories of the cardinals? There are three categories of cardinals. I don't say a sort of ranking as such or a prestigious position as such, but that's the way that they are categorized. We are first of all what's called the cardinal bishops. The cardinal bishops. And then we have cardinal priests and cardinal deacons. Most of the cardinals are cardinal priests, including those two new cardinals that we have, they are cardinal priests. The cardinal bishops, as we sort of the ranking, if we may call it in that way, the cardinal bishops are in charge of the basilica churches or the big churches in Rome. There are six of them. There are six of them, like St. John the Lateran and uh, St. Paul's Basilica in Rome, Maria Maggiore, they call it, St. Mary Major. And so these are the basilicas and also the other main churches are given to the charge of the cardinal bishops. There are the most category, the biggest category of cardinal priests. They are given the other churches in Rome. You know, there are churches of 300, 200, 300, 500, 1000 year old churches and some of them on the periphery, some of them in the city, of which these are cardinal priests are in charge. The cardinal deacons is more of an office, especially those who are in charge of the congregations, dicasteries. They do a service, you know, the word diaconia means service. So they are rendering a service in that way. Altogether, there must be about 140 or little more cardinals who are active cardinals. You know, the cardinals can, they are, their main duty is to, to be of support to the Holy Father who consults them on matters of importance in the whole church. They are also cardinals who are required, mostly, all of them, at the time of election of a new pope. And so the new pope is elected by the cardinals and the age limit for the cardinals to elect and to be elected is 80 years. And those after 80 years, they cannot vote for the next pope or whoever the new pope is coming, but they can be elected. You know, the Pope has no age limit as such. Pope John Paul II, we have seen that he lived up to 85, 86 years. The Pope Benedict resigned at the age of 85 or a little more than that. And there is something called the Pope can also resign. He doesn't have to give this resignation to anybody. Some say he gives a resignation to God. That means when he makes it obvious that he's resigning, that itself is considered as a resignation that is accepted. We pray for the Holy Father in a very special way. Pope Francis, I saw him in close quarters. He, as I said last time, he cannot stand. He does all the ceremonies sitting in the wheelchair, but his voice is very firm and very much convincing. And as you know, he speaks from the heart. It's much more, he connects to the people immediately because of course, he has sometimes papers to read, his sermons, but many a time he just bursts out into a, a, a monologue or colloquial that is easily accessible and acceptable to the people. We pray for the Holy Father's health in a very special way. I now take you to, we are in this week, which is a very important week for Bangalore. The week of the Nativity, Navina as also the Feast of Mother Mary. I have seen the, the crowds that are coming and the people with great devotion paying, paying. And you know, I was surprised even when I was in Rome, someone told me the experience of the 
Marian Basilica, the Novena, the prayers and the feast is a great experience. You know, one foreigner told me when I was watching and when I was mingling with the crowd, with what devotion the people join their hands, they are immersed. There is no disturbance for them. It's only the focus on Mother Mary to pray and to seek blessings from her. And this is what I ask for each one of you, my dear brothers and sisters. I am sure that many of you have already visited the Basilica in the Navina days. The others who also follow, come with your family. Spend some time in the Basilica, in the shrine, in front of the Blessed Sacrament. There is also the adoration for the whole day and night that is kept there. Spend time so that you are not only close to this atmosphere of spirituality, but then you are close to our Heavenly Mother. Mother is an important person in our family. She knows the troubles, she knows the struggles, she knows what's in and what's out. And therefore, the children can rely and trust in the mother and also the father. And so I call upon you to surrender yourself to Mother Mary, to do the will of God in your life and to accept the circumstances that God gives you. I can understand all of you have a prayer, you have a request for Mother Mary. Surely may she grant you. But even if she cannot, you know, mother, every mother doesn't give everything that the children ask. Perhaps we are asking for some things which are silly. Perhaps we are asking for some things which are dangerous. And so the mother knows what to give and what not to give. And when she does not give you what she perhaps you are asking, perhaps she wants to give you something better, something higher. And therefore, let us all resign ourselves to Mother Mary, asking God to fulfill His will in our life. I now take you to, to the point that I made in my last intervention to you, especially as regards your voting cards. Election voting cards. It's an important card for us. Many people perhaps have what's called the other card. Some have got the pan card. Some have the other identity cards. But the election card is that card which allows you to participate in the elections of the country, of the state, perhaps of the corporation. And therefore it is necessary to update this card. Those who have it, Surely you have to check and see whether the place, the booth or perhaps your names are correct, your gender is correct and so this type of what we call revising of electoral rules and also updating it is a constant process that has to be done. Many of our Christians are, do not do it. Either they do it out of negligence, they don't want to do it or perhaps some they just take it for carelessly take it for granted that nothing may be changed, it may not be. So therefore, there are some among us, the volunteers from among the women, the volunteers from among the youth, that are go around and they are ready to help you. You can surely ask their help and support the Youth Commission Director or the Women's Commission Secretary. The, the Women's Commission Secretary is Mrs. Mia Priya Francis and Father Anil Desa is the director of the youth. They will surely come and help you, perhaps after Mass on Sundays, put a desk there and help the people if they have brought their election cards to make it obvious to them that their card is still valid or not valid and what they can do it, etc. I am very happy that two parishes had a very successful sort of channelizing of all the energies to do this election card revisiting or perhaps checking up and that's the parish of the infant Jesus in Vivek Nagar and also the parish of Ascension in Decosta Square. I am sure more and more parishes will call, invite and the parish priest themselves along with the religious will take this initiative, for example the religious in their own schools etc. The teachers, so many teachers are there, the teachers' families Perhaps the youth in their own neighborhood can also organize these voter card checking exercises in their area. 
the rains the rains the rains perhaps we in bangalore doesn't have that much but when it does rain i know that in some places it's a nuisance because the water's flow inside the houses the roads become damp the roads become dirty and it's not possible to travel is a traffic jam also these small inconveniences we have to bear but i think we have to pay attention also and pray for those places in karnataka in north india where it's pouring and the floods and the floods you can imagine a lifetime savings of building a house is just washed away washed away and therefore i request you to pray in a very special way and surely if there's some help that we can extend to these people who have lost their houses who have lost their lives and surely many of them have become poor we have to also pay attention to these concerns of the people irrespective of caste creed and color race because everyone is affected everyone is affected and surely we will try to reach out to them and pray for them very specially my dear friends i come to the questions now i must say very ticklish questions and very interesting also the question that is asked today is the first one can a catholic participate in a hindu wedding if their son or daughter is marrying a hindu the second question is is it considered a sin for the catholic to participate in the hindu rituals let me first go with the second question it's not a sin for a christian to participate in a hindu wedding you know wedding marriages for all the people it's a happy occasion whether it's for christians for hindus for muslims for anybody it's a lifetime situation some many people don't get married again and again and so since it's a life situation we should also make the people happy perhaps india has got such a rich tradition of so many feasts our hindu brothers our muslim brothers and our christian feasts also that we can call them we can invite them we can share our joys with them so therefore there's nothing wrong in participating rather in making yourself present in a hindu wedding what is forbidden is the hindu rituals or perhaps the rituals of another religion the ritual means worshiping a particular god in of that particular religion that is not correct i would say we cannot put our legs in two boats one is a christian god another is a hindu god the hindus have belief and we respect them for their beliefs in particular gods or deities that they have we also have the holy trinity we believe in the saints and therefore we don't mix up these two issues and we say that while it is nothing wrong in participating in a hindu wedding perhaps having their foods giving a gift i also have visited many hindu couples muslims also i have also participated recently 2 3 months back in the iftar program of the lunch of the dinner of the muslims these are all happy occasions we should but participating in the rituals is another thing which is not to be done the first question is can a catholic participate in a hindu wedding if their son or daughter is marrying a hindu first of all when a catholic is marrying a person of another religion it's called an inter religious wedding for which we need a dispensation from the church the church does give dispensation for a christian to marry a hindu person and the promise that we ask of the christian party is that the christian party after the marriage will continue to practice the religion of the christians the catholic party and also the little promise that they make is they will try to bring their children also in the faith of the christian party this is a, a small promise that the christian party makes it's called a dispensation that is given for marriage and normally in the church when the marriage is celebrated perhaps we may not have the eucharistic part of it because the eucharistic means the non catholic part cannot receive the holy communion 
and it becomes embarrassing that the person who participates doesn't participate fully the catholic party can perhaps given communion so for in order to avoid these sort of complications we have the wedding of the christian and the non christian party together either before the mass or the few t- hours or an hour or so before the mass so that if they want they can participate in the mass as as common citizens as everybody else what about the hindu wedding we normally do not encourage the christian party who is celebrating the wedding in the church also to celebrate have a parallel hindu wedding we say perhaps this doesn't look very nice it's like once again as i said that you want to please two gods or two two religious entities two religious rituals but in some cases the christians perhaps may not have the rituals proper but they could be a celebration uh, a celebration of friends a circles of family who come together and surely this joyous occasion of the christian also celebrating in the with a hindu family or the non christian family i would say perhaps i would tolerate or perhaps i would say okay this is good for us but to participate for the christian to participate in the hindu rituals would as good as saying that i don't believe in my own god and i don't believe in my own religion also the force of circumstances is always there but then we would like to advise our catholics to say that surely when you fall in love love is blind we say we cannot object you to getting married to a non christians but these small implications have also to be remembered and to see that you do not get into situations which are embarrassing for you and your family that you participate in the hindu rituals which i would say the commandment says love your god with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul with all your strength you can't love two gods with two hearts with two minds with two souls as it were and therefore we request that you really realize and plan out your weddings in a good manner so that it's a happy occasion for you and for your family god bless you may you have a good weekend my dear friends please do share your feedback your impressions and your experience or send a message to the email address as you find on the screen archdblr@gmail.com and you also have the phone number the mobile number wherein you can send your message or a whatsapp on this number archbishop is ready and waiting to answer your questions if you have any question any doubt any uncertainty or there's no clarity upon something you can ask those questions and with the discretion that the archbishop will surely answer these questions in the weekly feature shepherd's voice thank you and we look forward to the next episodes